to full Barbados. Good afternoon, I'm Lisa Broom with the CBC News Break. Barbados is to receive a near $2 million payout as part of its parametric tropical cyclone insurance policy from the Caribbean Catastrophe Risk Insurance Fund. It comes following the passage of then Tropical Storm Matthew. The payout of 975,000 US or $1,950,000 is for losses caused by Matthew here in Barbados. Now, Matthew affected five of the Seacrest member countries Barbados, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The preliminary runs of the Seacrest loss model for wind and storm surge produced no government losses in Grenada and Dominica and some government losses in Barbados, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The countries affected by Matthew also have excess rainfall policies which pay out based on parametric factors relating to rainfall totals. The Secret is set to issue a report on this in the coming days. Meantime, Hurricane Matthew is now battering the Bahamas. Millions, meanwhile, in several U.S. states are heeding calls to evacuate. Matthew has left a trail of destruction across several Caribbean states. Several deaths were also reported, stretching from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Colombia, Haiti and the Dominican Republic. More than two million people from Florida to the Carolinas have been urged to evacuate ahead of Hurricane Matthew. Anyone that's trying to wait this out, we ask you to take caution and, and try and heed what everybody else is doing. And the number of people under mandatory evacuation orders, the highest since Hurricane Sandy in 2012. This is serious. Florida's governor telling the state's one and a half million residents get ready for what could be a devastating storm. We will likely start to see impacts on our state within the next 24 hours and last through the weekend. That means people have less than 24 hours left to prepare, evacuate, and shelter. Matthew hit the island nation of Haiti as a Category 4 hurricane on Tuesday. Well, that was Holly Furfer reporting there. And we have new information out of Haiti that at least 23 people have died as a result of that storm. And that figure, we are told, does not take into account a potentially greater loss of life than the far southwest of the country where the hurricane made a direct hit, we are told those areas are still cut off from all communication. And back at home, police have made a breakthrough in their investigations into the death of Michael McDonald Mapp of number two Blaze Hill St. Philip. Akeem Dave Mason, who was being sought by police for more than a month after turning himself in, was charged with the murder of Mapp. 42-year-old Mapp was the subject of a missing person bulletin after he was last seen alive on May 18th. His body was discovered in a shallow grave at Fortescue on May 24th. Mason is expected to appear before the District C Magistrate's Court today. And police have identified the body of a man found on the roadway at the corner of George Street and Belmont Road, St. Michael, on Monday. It is that of 39-year-old David Delisle Harewood of No Fixed Place of Abode. Harewood's body was discovered around 2.10 in the morning by a police mobile unit with what appears to be severe head trauma. Police say a number of people are currently assisting them in their investigations. In other news now, Chief Agricultural Officer Lennox Chandler has dismissed suggestions that incorporating technology in agriculture will allow young people to escape being in the sun. While he notes there are some benefits to having technology, he says being out in the field is critical in agriculture. Yes, technology will help, but agriculture or farming is a field activity. I know a mode of technology will change that. So if people are of the notion that they will go into some big building and farm in an air-conditioned unit, they can, they can forget about it. Agriculture is essentially in the field. Food comes from the soil. And if you are not prepared to go in the field and work in agriculture, then your future in agriculture, for me, is questionable. Palliative care and pain management will be given some close attention over the next week and a half. This as the section of the medical fraternity and volunteers involved host a series of events to continue to bring educate to bring attention, that is, to this often overlooked and misunderstood area of treatment. 
Deanne Sobers, head of the Barbados Association of Palliative Care, says a day of prayer and the inaugural Tim Graves Memorial Lecture will be the highlight of the event. The lecture, held in conjunction with the University of the Southern Caribbean Barbados, celebrates the life of Dr. Graves and focuses the nation on the importance of hospice and palliative care. Most of us do not realize that we have a holistic pain, whether it's psychological, social, uh, spiritual, or physical. There is pain in each person's life. How, is that, how that pain is handled is very important. And that's one of the reasons why the world is celebrating this year in terms of pain management. How do you handle pain? What do you do in terms of not only the medication part, but in terms of the psychological counseling? or having your friends with you in terms of the social aspect. Meantime, Dr. Natalie Graves, chairperson of the National Advisory Committee on Chronic Pain Management, says an international conference is also on the cards. At this conference, what we hope to accomplish um, would be a, a, a template for not just advocacy, but for the development of policy on the management of pain so that across the region there are some basic standards uh, we have um, medications that can be assessed and more importantly that where there is stigma attached to the use of particular medications in particular um, opioids and when I say opioids for the most part we're talking about um, morphine and some of its um, related um, drug types well, the Caribbean has no excuse not to have the best information on HIV. This charge from Deputy Principal of the UEK Field Campus, Professor Clive Landis, during his featured speech of the Faculty of Medical Sciences, eliminating AIDS in Barbados through rational decision-making lecture. Professor Landis outlined the extensive information on HIVgateway.com, a product of the National HIV AIDS Commission. It is a fabulous website which has everything to do with HIV in the Caribbean as it affects people in the Caribbean or as it affects people who may have migrated abroad Caribbean populations and the, the requirement is that it has to do with the Caribbean it might have a Caribbean author and HIV and it is searchable it's great fun and everything is there this lecture will be uploaded tomorrow and it's it's got lots of good content it's not just another PubMed it's got videos, it's got PowerPoints, it's got really rich content, it's fantastic. The deputy principal pointed out that AIDS is the leading cause of death between the ages of 19 and 45 in the Caribbean and that there are barriers keeping the patients from the information and the drugs they need. It is the diagnosis which you need in the first place and then the linkage to care and what's hindering that is fear and stigma. And then even once you're linked to care and you're on the drugs, you need support. You know, these drugs, you have to take them religiously, you know, and you need to adhere and have support. But instead, what many patients get is discrimination and isolation. His speech was delivered as part of the university's public lecture series in recognition of Barbados' 50th anniversary of independence. We'll take a break here, but when we come back, news from the region and further afield.